I saw Star Wars The Last Jedi. Before I watched the movie, I heard there were strong love and hate reactions. I didn't pay attention to those. The online Star Wars community is, after all, bourbons. Star Wars has an enormous presence in pop culture through its decades-long history where fans have come in at different times. It has been part of practically everyone's life to varying degrees, and with the ubiquity of the marketing, it's that way whether they like it or not. This megaton on pop culture started with a fun space adventure movie that was salvaged in editing, a sequel that actually improved upon the original in every single way, and the OK sequel where the marketing and merchandising really kicked in. It wasn't until over a decade that a new Star Wars movie came into theaters, and that started a new trilogy of shockingly incompetent mega-blockbuster movies that did a lot of things to the Star Wars legacy. One of which is provide subsequent movies with a buffer and that they will never be that terrible. Conversely, the original trilogy is so good and embedded so deeply into the pop culture consciousness that any future movie probably will not be as good. Well best they can be better than Return of the Jedi. No matter what anyone says about these movies, new and old, the reaction is strong. All I can do is give my opinion, so here are my thoughts on The Last Jedi. I thought the movie was okay. There were some bits that were fun and some interesting explorations of characters in the story, but they are dragged down by poor pacing and a bloated runtime. While I do like humor, the humor in a film needs to be appropriate to the tone of the film. Too many comedic moments in this film clash with the established characters and the overall tone of the narrative. Certain bits were quick enough to not be too distracting, but others took me straight out of the movie. I'm going again to spoilers now. If you don't want anything spoiled, skip to this time code. There was one example of tone-death humor right at the start where Poe prank calls the foppish villain general from the last movie. It reminded me of the back and forth between Rocket and the gold people from Guardians of the Galaxy 2, and it does not work here. The Guardians of the Galaxy movies have a more comedic tone than Star Wars, and the characters are more naturally comedic. But I try to apply that kind of humor to these characters and this story, it falls flat most of the time. Let's talk about why this movie was two and a half hours long. If a movie is paced well, you do not notice how much time has passed, but this movie has quite a few issues that messed up the pacing. For one, there are too many subplots going on at once. During the middle of the movie, you have Rey and Luke talking about the Force, Rey talking psychically to Kylo Ren, Finn and Rose trying to find a guy at a casino, Poe's conflict with Laura Dern's character, and the Resistance fleet struggling to survive while tracked by the First Order. Right off the bat, at least two of those can be axed. Specifically, Finn and Rose's mission and Poe's conflict with Dr. Ellie Sadler of purple hair. And the story would be relatively the same because those subplots go nowhere. Poe fails, and Ellie Sadler's plan works, Finn and Rose's mission fails, and they spent way too much time on a ridiculous casino planet. I think the director was trying to subvert what audiences were expecting, but when he tries to be subversive, there should be a point to it. In this movie, the subversions only weakened the narrative and made me care less about these characters. The Force Awakens introduced new characters while giving returning characters cameos to pass the torch, so The Last Jedi should be about the new characters coming into their own. Instead, the movie received has the new characters spinning their wheels for the whole movie. Poe was barely a character in The Force Awakens, and he is an active drag on the story in this movie. His plan fails, and he's proven to be wrong in his arguments with Ellie Sattler, when she saves the day. His subplot is rendered pointless because it could have been avoided if she just told him what she was doing. Her kamikaze strike decimates the First Order's flagship, lest the transport ships escape, saves Finn and Rose from execution, and gives Rey an opening to escape from Kylo Ren. But after those battles end, the movie doesn't. We get another half hour of fighting. That last fight scene, oh my goodness, it was so taxing of my suspension of disbelief. 
The last battle has a maelstrom of absurdity. There's Rose's stupid decision, bad comedy of Kylo and the foppish general, Rey coming out of nowhere suddenly on the Millennium Falcon, and Luke demonstrating that the Force can do anything. Customizable astral projection from light years away that can be tangible when it needs to be, and creation of solid objects that remain for a short time after the user dies. Yeah. And then there's Snoke. When I watched The Force Awakens and saw Snoke for the first time, I thought two things. First, he would be a rehash of Palpatine. Second, he would be less a character and more negative force. Both assumptions were right. He uses the Force to drive the plot in his favor until he gets taken out like a chump by Kylo Ren, and absolutely no one cares. His role is done and his impact nullified. Tata, a guy some people thought may have been Jocasta from the Clone Wars era. That fan theory is probably the most interesting thing about that character. Well, that and his gaudy gold bathrobe. See? They're subverting your expectation of a Sith Lord not dressing like a Cadbury egg. After all that, the movie finally ends. That said, I did enjoy it. The performances were good and there were some great moments. The movie is uneven and too long, but it offers a lot. You can like some bits and not others. If you're a Star Wars fan, you probably have already seen it or will see it soon. If you aren't a fan, I do recommend seeing it if you have a lot of time in your hands. It is a spectacle with some cool moments. Let's see what the next movie has in store for us. Oh boy. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all next time.